Good evening and welcome, parents, relatives, friends, and all to the 2019 Kane Area High School commencement ceremony. I ask that you please turn off or silence your cell phones at this time. I would like to now introduce Mr. Jeffrey Kepler, Kane Area School District Superintendent. Good evening and welcome to the 120th commencement of Kane Area High School. Congratulations to the seniors here tonight on reaching this milestone in their lives. It has been a pleasure to watch you grow into the young adults that you have become. You have bright futures ahead of you. And congratulations to you parents, families, teachers, and friends that have helped them along the way. I wish all of you well and the best of luck as you leave here this evening in pursuit of your dreams and your goals. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce this evening's graduation speaker, Dr. Adam Miller. Dr. Miller is a 1993 graduate of the Kane Area High School where he excelled in the classroom as a wrestler, as an all-state golfer, and in his service to the school as the National Honor Society member and the president of student council. He grew up in Ludlow, the son of Reverend John Miller and Diane Miller. He has two older sisters, Carrie, who is with us this evening, and Kelly. Dr. Miller and his wife, Dr. Blaine Bernstock, have a five-year-old son, Coleman. After graduation from high school, he continued his academic career at Duke University, where he graduated in 1997 with a Bachelor of Science degree in biology. He then attended veterinary school at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia and graduated in 2001 with a doctorate in veterinary medicine. After college, Dr. Miller returned to Kane for a year as an associate veterinarian for Dr. Stanish at the Pine Haven Vet Clinic. He and his wife, who is also a veterinarian, have been the owners of the Kinzu Veterinary Clinic since 2004. Dr. Miller is an avid outdoorsman, an accomplished bow hunter, and he still enjoys golfing. He has represented himself and his family with dignity, humility, and respect. And it is an honor to stand with him here this evening. I am proud to present to you Kane alumnus, Dr. Adam Miller, as tonight's graduation speaker. Please join me in a round of applause as we welcome Dr. Miller. Congratulations, welcome, great to have you. Well, congratulations. And uh, <clears throat> a couple months ago, your principal asked me to talk to you and felt kind of obligated to do it. And after a couple of days, I thought, not sure what I just got myself into. But I asked him to send me a list of all the graduating seniors. And I looked down through that list and quickly realized, man, a lot of your parents were in school with me. So it's just like coming home and talking to everybody again. So I was told I should start this out with a joke, and since you guys are all adults now, it'll be an adult joke, but we don't want your siblings to hear, so. Well, after a couple of days of considering what I'd gotten into, I thought about what I was going to say to you, and it generally just came out like a politician or a preacher speaking. 
I thought, I need some advice on what to do here. So I asked my dad. I've received more advice over the years from my dad than anybody else. And uh, my dad said, you know, this reminds me of when I was a senior in high school and I was going to give the salutatorian speech and I had to practice it for our advisor. He said, I got done with the speech and the advisor said to me, John, you sound like a preacher, and that's the absolute worst thing I can tell you. And Reverend Miller's sitting over here with my mom and my one sister, Carrie. So must not have been that bad. So among the advice he gave us as kids, it was uh, a lot of times, don't forget who you are. And when we were in kindergarten, you left for school, he said, don't forget who you are. Got it, Dad. I'm Adam Miller. I remember my name. It's not really what he meant. By the time I was sitting where you guys were, who I was, that was Honor 7, student council president, National Honor Society, wrestler. Let me see the wrestlers. Raise your hands. How'd you guys do this year? Yeah, real good. Alec, congratulations, all of you guys, getting to regionals, to states, that's an incredible honor. Yeah, so I was a golfer, I was a hunter, a fisherman, but I was also a goal setter, and uh, I was from Ludlow, that was a big part of who I am. Is there anybody in this class from Ludlow? One, two, all right. Yep, don't forget who you are. So... I uh, left high school, I went to Duke, I went to vet school at Penn, I came back here at Kane as a veterinarian just as I'd planned since I was a little kid, that's what I was going to do. And it wasn't long, I was working six to seven days a week, seeing a lot of emergencies, I would sleep at the clinic 60% of the time on the weekends. Uh, there was no technician to see the emergencies with me, which meant you had to take x-rays by yourself. Sometimes you did surgery and anesthesia by yourself. I had a seizure in cat one time that needed an IV and uh, nobody there to hold it. How do you put an IV in a cat that's going? You know, you tie one leg to the table here and one leg back here and you put a tourniquet on the arm and you learn to get things done. But uh, it, it wasn't a really good situation for me. I was late for my own wedding rehearsal by an hour because I was cutting the head off of a horse in somebody's pasture. It was neurologic. It was going to die while I was on my honeymoon. I'd seen it several times, had my hands in its mouth, never had a rabies vaccine. It was pretty important that that thing get tested for rabies. And if that meant I was late for my rehearsal, the whole church waited. Luckily, my dad was the one doing the service, so he managed to keep people entertained. We took a lot of after-hour calls, too. You went home, somebody called you. You started to eat dinner, somebody called you. You went to sleep, somebody called you. 2.30 in the morning, somebody called you. It was, you know, every other night. That's how your night went. And the phone calls were, you know... Dr. Miller, I, I hate to bother you at 2.30 in the morning, but my dog has a tick. Now, I, I put alcohol on it, and the tick didn't come out. Should I touch it with a hot match? Anybody know what happens with fire and alcohol? <laughs> Don't do that to your dog. Uh, we're going to get into some adult stuff again. Doc, my dog's had an erection for the last 30 minutes. What should I do? Doc, I looked outside, and my pure breed lab was in the yard, and my neighbor's mixed breed was tied in with her. Does that mean she's no longer a mixed breed? Or no, no longer a pure breed. Is she now a mixed breed? No, I don't think her genetics have changed. <laughs> Doc, my dog's in heat. I put a tampon in her, and now I can't find the tampon. <laughs> Dogs don't leave tampons in themselves, and when you can't find them, that means it went in the other side. There was one that was a 4.30 in the morning. Uh, doctor, my dog's been panting a lot for the last hour. Do you think she could be pregnant? Do you want to bring her in and I'll look at her? No, we're blind. We can't drive. Okay, well, put the phone up next to the belly. I'll listen and we'll see. But, you know, these calls night after night, they, they took a toll. 
and uh, I had achieved my goal, had come back here, and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, and it got so bad, I had nights where I would drive home, and I would think, you could just go 90 miles an hour, take your seatbelt off, and hit that tree. It would all be over, and I realized something had to change, so I, I told Dr. Stanish, I'll finish out this first year, but I'm going to change jobs at the end of the year. And uh, it was very hard for her because that's something she'd been doing by herself for years. But, you know, by the end of that first year, I weighed 136 pounds. It's been a long time since I've weighed 136 pounds. I would get up in the morning, I'd walk out to my truck, I'd puke, and I was a loud puker, the yeller, ah, and my wife would lay in bed with a pillow over her head. I can't stand listening to that. But... I got through that year, I changed jobs, and it was better for a little bit. The new job was good for a year. Pretty soon there was a $6,000 tax mistake. Seemed like a lot of money back then. Dad, can I borrow $6,000? Here's a check. A couple years later, we bought the clinic. A couple years after that, we bought the property with the clinic. A couple years after that, we put an addition on the clinic. Then we bought our dream house on the hill, that dream house that turned into the nightmare. Water damage that the other owner had covered up, never disclosed. We had to take out roughly another $100,000 in loans there. Uh, it wasn't long before we were almost a million dollars in debt. And the bank got to the point where they just sent a loan officers down to the clinic. Here's another loan, just sign here. But we had our in-laws house as collateral. I had my grandmother's stocks and bonds as collateral. And the debt went up, the hours got longer. We had an associate for a while, it was okay. That associate left and I started having cardiac arrhythmias. And I was driving to work one morning, and my heart started to go funky, and it didn't stop. And I, I got to work, straightened out. I saw my doctor, and the doctor said to me, well, you and your wife are both successful professionals. You just need to cut back. Thinking, I don't know who's going to pay these loans off if I cut back. So we made some small adjustments. I stopped calling clients back. I made receptionists and technicians do all the phone calls. Oh, we stopped seeing weekend emergencies, and that's when clients, they didn't care. They got mad. We're going to go somewhere else. Uh, when you went to vet school, you should have known. You need to be available for us 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And... Uh, they left for other clinics, clinics that told them they were always on call when they weren't. And suddenly it seemed like all those late nights, all those Christmas mornings from 5 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon that I spent there seeing emergencies, and usually emergencies that could have waited, it didn't matter to those people. It was really, what can you do for us now? So... We went a couple years, we hired two associates, things got a little bit better. Um, in 2016, then I had a really close friend die of cancer. And I looked at where I was and thought, is this worth it? And I had uh, a bad week, a couple of bad interactions with clients, a staff member. I walked out of that office, I told my wife, I'm done. I said, I can't see appointments anymore. If you want me to do surgeries, I'll do surgeries, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with this stuff. And uh, she said, okay, and for the last three years, I've basically been doing surgeries. I don't see appointments except for a few people here and there. And you guys are sitting here wondering right now, why did your principal call me and have me come here? You know, he's a successful alumni. He's a doctor. He's got it all figured out. So, Miss Nicole Brown, she spent a morning at our clinic. How was it there? Awesome. Okay. D do I have things a little bit more straight now, or did I seem like no, no good? It's okay. All right. How about a? Uh, was it Haley Saf? Where are you at? So, 
Did uh, What do you want to do when you're done here? Forensic science. Did you ever consider veterinary stuff? Oh, it's your sister that your mom asked me about. So is your sister here? Okay. So this isn't a Dr. Dream Crusher speech, okay? That's not the point. Because although <coughs> things were hard, there's a lot of stuff in my life that is so much better because I went through that. You know, people look at you and they say you're successful because you're a doctor. That, that honestly to me doesn't mean a whole lot. They think people who make a lot of money are successful, but how many people who have a lot of money do you know that are just miserable? You know, er everybody's seen those people. You know, I should be out of debt by the time I'm 58. You know, I've come to grips with that. It's okay. Uh, that big dream house on the hill, you know, we've fixed it. I've learned a lot about houses, but someday I plan on selling it. Uh, I don't drive an expensive car. I, uh, you know, family. If you ask me what's my big biggest success, it's my family, it's my wife. You know, my wife still works a lot of hours so that I don't have to. And we have a child, a child that I never thought we would have because of the way we worked. And uh, I don't know why I was so lucky with my wife. And, you know, a lot of things that you guys do, it, it may be dumb luck when you get it right. You may make a lot of mistakes, and that's fine. Come back to a class reunion and see people who've had gone through one, two, three marriages. Sometimes it takes three times to get it right. But I would say for me, you know, success having a kid, being able to see the world through his eyes. Because when you guys are 40 or 50, you're going to look at the world differently. You'll have had some negative experiences. You might be bitter. Have some kids. Raise those kids. Watch the way they look at things. You know, and I'm, I'm happy now. I don't know why Mr. Kepler thinks I'm an accomplished archer. I like to archery hunt in the fall. I like to golf in the summer. I've got a wood shop now. I find a lot of pleasure in going out and making furniture. Just got to make sure I don't cut a finger off because then my surgery stuff's going down the drain. But where you guys are sitting here, you know, Honor 7 Vocational Academic, that doesn't have anything to do with where you're going to be when you get to the point where your parents are. Some of you will leave here. You might never come back. Some of you will stay here. Some of you will have family. Some of you won't. You'll have so many different professions. And the one thing I will say is come back to Alumni Weekend. You know, every reunion you have. You know, and if you live here, go to your Alumni Weekend. Find out where everybody is that moved away. And share your stories about your family, your jobs, your careers. You know, don't be embarrassed if you don't think you got it right. You know, it's, uh, it's a long journey for a lot of you. And you just need to keep learning. And you need to figure out who you are. And you need to not forget who you are. In my class, I was amazed to see doctors, lawyers, nurses, zookeepers, electricians, Small business owners, career military, truck drivers, contractors, people with second careers, second marriages, kids. And, uh, yeah, it's just the only thing school was was practice. It was practice for how to learn. It doesn't define who you guys are going to be down the road. Now, my sister that couldn't be here has a really bad habit of getting on Facebook and engaging in political discussions with other people. Do any of your parents do that? Do any of you guys do that? Are we still too young to be political? Who's registered to vote? Who's a registered Republican? Who's a registered Democrat? How did you guys determine what you were going to register as? When I was your age, I had no idea what it meant to be a Republican or, or a Democrat. And I think when you guys register, the best thing you can do is just say, heads Republican, tails Democrat, flip a coin. 
Because if you're going to remember who you are, you cannot be boxed into what they define as a Republican or a Democrat. It's stupid. It's just, and you know what? Don't get on Facebook and chew out people that you went to school with. We all came from the same place. It doesn't mean we have the same views. It doesn't mean that somebody's racist or sexist or whatever. And uh, you shouldn't call somebody a liberal or a conservative like it's a bad name. You know, don't forget who you are. Don't forget where you guys came from. I guess the other thing, I'm just going to plug the climate change thing here because you guys are the future and you might as well hear it. Climate change is real. There's 7.7 .7 billion people on this earth. It gets more every year. You guys never take for granted what little changes can do. And when you see somebody with all these solar panels on their house and electric car, the only thing you should think is, you know what? It is possible for us to all be that way someday. We just have to break away from petroleum, but there's so much money there. But you're going to have to decide, you know, is it worth the money now or the future later? So, so listen, I am happy, okay? I feel successful. I've failed at some things. I've changed and I've adapted. Uh, you can have a lot of success in life, but there's another thing that's guaranteed. There's, there is a lot of pain and loss that comes with life. As a veterinarian, you see that when you bring a puppy into the world and 10 years later you take it out of the world and their lifespan goes so quickly. And I've written thousands of sympathy cards over the years. And I lost a really good friend in vet school shortly after we graduated from cancer. I lost a close friend a few years ago from cancer. And I sat down and started to think about some of the people that your parents have lost since they've graduated. And I, I hesitated about reading the list because I know I don't live here in Kane anymore. I've been away for a long time. There are a lot of people that were left off this list. But they remember some of these names, like Jeffrey Palmer, Andy Linquist, Ira Grush, John Moore, Rico Bizak, Ken Van Giesen, Tommy Slater, Regina Slater, Billy Joe Snyder, Robin Duck, Dana Burton, Beth Regal, John Bernhard, Russ Count, Scott Nunn, Jarrett Costanza, Olivia Douglas, Carrie Snyder Sowers, Tristan Sowers. You know, some of these were kids of people we went to school with. And you guys take a little piece of them with you wherever you go. Some of you guys are getting scholarships in their names. And I, I want you guys to leave here tonight and have fun, but do your best to be safe. You guys should strive for quality of life through health, exercise, working hard, and maintaining balance. Don't forget who you are. You came from this community. Some of you are going to go out in the world into other communities, and you should remember what you learned here. And you should strive to be a productive part of that community and do service to others no matter where you end up. And uh, you're still going to learn who you are, okay? Don't forget who you are now. Learn who you are in the future. So a big part about me is I'm an introvert. Does anybody know what an introvert is? Okay. Okay. How many of you guys look at yourselves as introverts? All right, you know, that's not a bad thing. But uh, it may take a little extra effort to overcome certain things, and I've found that I need to stand up straight, look people in the eyes, and smile when I meet them. Okay? And now for all of you, we're going to send you out. Stand up. Gonna do the Superman pose. Who knows that one? Put your hands on your hips. Get that chest out and your shoulders back. Turn your head to the side. You guys are ready to go, okay? Thank you, Dr. Miller, for your inspiring speech. I would like to now call up the 2019 senior who is the class president, 
Aiden Eulings. Good evening, parents, family, friends, teachers, other faculty, and class of 2019. For those of you that don't know me, I am Aiden Hewings. I am honored to welcome you to tonight's graduation. The past two weeks, I've been busy with term papers, the senior trip, prom, and preparing for finals. I left my house this evening with my notes for tonight's speech. At least I thought they were my notes. Turns out I grabbed my term paper. <laughs> so here it goes. My British author was born in 1874. <laughs> Just kidding. Many people say that graduation day is the day that we start our journey. But the journey began 13 years ago. Today just happens to be the day where the path we've been traveling on splits into 81 individual and unique paths. Until now, we are on this path together. It seems like just yesterday that our parents walked us to school or to the bus stop for the first time. We're in kindergarten, and our biggest worry is not having enough time to build the biggest block tower, make the letters right in our first name. For the next five years of elementary school, we look forward to recess, lunch, and school parties. Then came middle school, where we spent three years heading down the path to our next adventure. We were 12 years old and felt important because we could get our first hunting license. We went to school dances and started putting books in our lockers. After that, we reached our next milestone, our own journey. We entered high school and became known as freshmen. We picked our classes and learned to follow a new schedule. Two years later, we were getting our permits, taking our driver's test, and getting our driver's licenses. Now we are seniors. Some of us have applied to college, some of us plan to work full time. Some of us plan to enlist in the military. Most of us are 18 and will register to vote and buy our first lottery tickets. The guys will register for the selective service. I enlisted in the Air Force Reserves and then a month later got my, remain, my reminder in the mail that I needed to register. I guess the government didn't get the memo that I was already in the military. The first 12 years have gone by quickly and our senior year has seemed to fly by. We, should have a, we have achieved many great things in sports, academics, the arts and music, and should be proud of our accomplishments. Aaron Lawrenson, a former travel adventurer who was a soldier, said, it's the everyday experiences we encounter along the journey to who we want to be that will define who we are when we get there. So tonight, as we come to the end of the path that we've walked as a class, hand in hand, we will each walk across stage and then venture down our own unique path. One thing is certain, we couldn't have done it without the support each step of the way. Thank you, family, friends, and faculty for supporting the class of 2019 on our journey. I would now like to call to the podium Mrs. Claire Ann Buckley, Kane Area School Board President, to receive the 2019 senior class gift. The class of 2019 would like to present a new sign of welcome to the Wolf's Den at the athletic field to the school board president, Mrs. Buckley. Thank you very much. Thank you to the class. This is much appreciated. I used to practice what I was going to say here, but none of you are going to remember what I say. This is too exciting. But there's not one person in this room tonight that can imagine what you kids are going to see in your lifetime, what you're going to do, what you're going to accomplish. We, we can't even imagine it. But on behalf of the school board, I hope you know it was an honor and a privilege I hope we just had a little bit of influence on what you're going to do with the rest of your lives because we're all so proud of you. Good luck. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Mrs. Buckley. We're now going to move to the scholarship part of our graduation ceremony. Our first scholarship awards presenter will be Mrs. Michelle Palmer for the Jeffrey Palmer Award. Congratulations. Oh, I'm short. Um, congratulations to the parents, family, and friends as well. Um, you guys got them here. Job well done. Um, the 27th 
Sergeant Jeffrey A. Palmer Memorial Scholarship is a $1,000 award awarded to a Canary High School student planning to further their education. Um, the members of our selection board are specifically searching for those students who display the qualities of patriotism, motivation, leadership, and self-discipline, but also a nice person. Jeff, who was a graduate of the class of 1989, played football, wrestled, was on the track team, and even played in the school band. He was always active in his church and in his community, and he made friends easily. When I ask his friends about him, the first thing they say is, he's such a nice guy, or do you remember the time he really gave so-and-so the shirt off of his own back? After graduation, Jeff joined the Army and became a Ranger. His mom didn't want him to be a Marine because it was going to be too dangerous. He was part of Operation Just Cause and the removal of General Manuel Noriega in Panama in December of 69, six months after walking this stage. He went on to earn, sorry, <laughs> many awards, attend many schools, and earn many medals before his death in 1992 after, a fall, after he fell during a live fire training accident. Training isn't always easy. You guys are going to learn that this year and next year and the next three years. This, school, this year's applications were a great group of kids, and you guys should all be proud of them. I mean, grade point averages alone, I think they all would, like, hit the solar system. These are awesome, smart kids. With them as our future, I'm not worried, and neither should you be, because they're going to take on this crazy world we live in and fix things. The young person chosen this year will get a plaque. Their name is already on the scholarships that's hanging, the scholarship plaque that's out hanging in the wall. Um, and they will be going to Juniata. And this award is dedicated, is given this year to a very good friend of mine that I've known since she was this big for her dedication, her hard work, her strength to persevere, her huge smile, and the biggest heart I've ever met. Chris Lynn Rhodes. Well, good evening. My name is Tyler Hanna, and like Dr. Miller, I too have an adult joke. No, I really don't. I am pleased to serve as the recording secretary to the board of directors of the Kane High School Alumni Memorial Award. Since its establishment by the class of 1955, the fund has presented nearly $230,000 in scholarships since 1985. Thanks a lot and, and to contributions from individual donations. Tonight, I'm happy to present two $4,000 scholarships to deserving members of the class of 2019. I now present the first award of $4,000 to Alicia Beal. I now present the second award of $4,000 to Ms. Hannah Buell. On behalf of the Kane High School Alumni Memorial Award Board of Directors and Donors, I wish you all well in your pursuits, whether academic or otherwise. Thank you. I'm still here. As past president of the Kane Rotary Club, I'm happy to present the Kane Rotary Club Scholarship. One of the main objectives of Rotary is service. The club proudly supports community service projects and programs and one such program having a lasting impact on the Kane community is the yearly presentation of a four-year scholarship to a deserving Kane High School graduate. Therefore, I'm happy to present the 2019 Kane Rotary Club Scholarship in the amount of $4,000 to Ms. Alicia Beal. The Kane Rotary Club wishes the members of the class of 2019 best wishes and future successes. Thank you. This 
So happy to be here again this year to present scholarships on behalf of the Kane Eagles. This is year 17 for us to award these scholarships. My name is Dee Carley. I'm the secretary for the Kane Eagles Auxiliary. And this is Rose Pennington. Rose is our auxiliary president. This past year, our scholarship committee made some changes. So this scholarship is now to be known as the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Memorial Scholarship. Helen graduated from Kane. She was big in track and she was our auxiliary president when she passed. She was very instrumental in organizing this scholarship and has stood here on this stage beside me and presented scholarships. So we memorialize her with this scholarship. The Fraternal Order of Eagles is an international nonprofit organization uniting fraternally in the spirit of liberty, truth, and justice, and equality to make human life more desirable by lessening its ills and promoting peace, prosperity, gladness, and hope. As part of its philosophy, the Fraternal Order of Eagles gives back 100% of monies raised for charities. We have eight major charities which include research projects for cancer, heart, diabetes, spinal cord injuries, and Alzheimer's. We support our troops. We support Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Special Olympics, Project Graduation, the Renaissance Committee, and so much more. Our list of donations is quite extensive, and I can't go on about all of those because, of course, tonight it's about our graduating seniors, and we support them. This scholarship is not based on financial need or GPAs. It's based on an essay on how the students' required community service has affected their lives. The Eagle motto is people helping people, so it only makes sense that these scholarships are based on the students' willingness to help people in their community along with their ambition and drive. It amazes me how hard these kids work and the time they're willing to share for their community. It's hard to choose just one recipient. <laughs> so this year we have a few to give out. So please stay on the stage until we have all the scholarships awarded. The first one, I have a close friend with Down syndrome, so Special Olympics has always been one of my favorite community services. The first recipient for this scholarship has volunteered for Special Olympics. She will be attending Indiana University with a major in psychology. She wants to become a school psychologist and learn how people's minds work and how they learn best. Paige Nicholas. Congratulations, Paige. This next one, this young woman wants to become a nurse and to apply to the U.S. Public Health Service in order to fulfill her passion for public service to the underserved and vulnerable populations, protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of the nation. So I'm very pleased to award this scholarship to Raisa Wright. The next scholarship is awarded to another young woman having worked with Special Olympics and Care for Kane. She all wa also wants to go into nursing. She's been accepted to Duquesne University. Congratulations, Ella Marconi. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how this next recipient is going to manage his time to do all that he wants to do. 
He's been accepted at Penn State Barron for fall classes in computer science and is also enlisted in the Air Force Reserves. He'll be leaving for Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas in August. Good luck, Aiden Hewlings. The next scholarship is being awarded to Alex Roselli. He's been accepted to Slippery Rock Honors College in order to pursue a management position in a resort area such as Walt Disney World. Awesome. The next young lady has a list of volunteer work as long as my arm, including Care for Cane Vacation Bible School, food pantry, packing backpacks for f with food for kids for the weekends. She will be attending the College of Agricultural Sciences with a major in veterinarian and biomedical science at Penn State University. Congratulations, Alicia Beal. Our next young lady in her younger years wanted to be the queen. Then she realized that it's not always about prestige and wealth. Now it's her passion to help people. She will be attending Juniata College with a major in biochemistry on the pre-dentistry track in hopes to become an oral surgeon. Congratulations, Chrysalyn Rhodes. The next young man is a very hard worker and deserves this chance to better his future by attending Triangle Tech in Dubois in the field of welding and fabrication. Congratulations, Devin Young. Our last recipient scholar Our last recipient scholarship for 2019 is being awarded to a young man that plans to enter culinary school. Congratulations, Brandon Reese. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good evening, and congratulations to Class 2019. My name is Dan Imbrogno. Uh, I'm here tonight to present the Horn Family Memorial Scholarship. The scholarship originated with the passing of Phyllis Horn and grew to encompass her son Eric and husband Keith Horn. Phyllis was a nurse who embodied the idea of compassion and had a genuine drive to help others. Eric was a forester who took pride in his work and had an unrivaled work ethic. Keith ran his own business and was a respected consulting forester. Keith understood words like loyalty, honesty, and integrity. When considering scholarship candidates, all of these characteristics were considered with the hope of finding someone who understands the ideas of hard work, compassion, and integrity. This year's Horn Family Scholarship goes to Rasa Wright.
Good evening, everyone. Congrats, graduates. My name is Robin Imbrogno, and I'm here to present the Philip J. Imbrogno Memorial Scholarship in honor of my father-in-law. I'd first like to thank Mr. Santiso, all the teachers, the National Honor Society, and everyone who has donated to help the Imbrogno family maintain the scholarship. Thank you so much. Your donations are very much appreciated. Philip Imbrogno was a dedicated teacher, an enthusiastic football coach, and a devoted husband and father. He was a man of true character and embodied integrity and loyalty. The student we chose is not only a scholar athlete, but possesses the characteristics and qualities we know Phil would be proud of. It's my great honor to present the Philip J. Memorial Scholarship to Ella Marconi. Good evening, my name's Pam Wright and I am the current exalted ruler of Cane Elks Lodge number 329 and I'm here to award this year's scholarships. The four crowning virtues of our order are charity, justice, brotherly love and fidelity. The Order of Elks exacts from its members strict dedication to family, community and country. This year's recipients exemplify these virtues through many channels, whether it be their polite and respectful character, their volunteerism at many community, church, and school-based events, or their sincere devotion, compassion, and love for their fellow human beings. They have worked hard to keep up with their academics while also working, putting in many volunteer hours, and being involved in many clubs and organizations. Tonight's awards are a $2,000 four-year school scholarship and a $500 vocational school scholarship. Both of the recipients' personal statements in their application truly impressed the scholarship committee because of their innate desire to be able to help and serve others, a desire that resonates deeply with Elks. On behalf of Kane Elks Lodge 329, it is my honor to award the 2019 four-year scholarship to Alex Roselli and the vocational scholarship to Alan Ettinger. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. My name is Debbie Wenzel, and I'm here to present the Howard Carter Jr. Memorial Scholarship. This is presented by the Phoenix Chapter Number 15 Order of the Eastern Star. They award a scholarship in the amount of $500 to a graduating senior who plans to pursue a career in service to others. This scholarship is offered annually to one senior student. This year's recipient is Ella Marconi. I'm also honored to present two scholarships on behalf of Beta Sigma Phi Service Sorority. Um, they are in the amount of $500. One is for Ella Marconi. The other is Alex Roselli. the first time I snuck in the back door so you probably thought I wasn't really here. Let me start by congratulating the class of 2019. This is your night. Have fun and be safe. This year the scholarship committee interviewed seven applicants. We want to thank you, the ones who took the time to fill out the applications. During the interviews what I heard the most was how excited everyone is to be moving on, and how sad it is to leave your high school friends. I thought about this and I wanted to give your class some advice, because I know this time of year and everything going on, nobody has any advice. 
right? Here is what you need to do, but you've probably already done it. Start a Facebook page, a closed page that is only open to Kane High School graduates 2019. This will allow you to easily stay in touch with all of your friends from high school. It will be a good place to share happy and sad times, a place to post pictures, and yes, even a place to vent occasionally. Then when it is your five-year reunion, you won't have to shy away from going. You will already have an idea of how, <coughs> how these high school friends are doing, where they're at, and what they're up to. Years ago, when I graduated, there was no Facebook. There was no social media to help stay in touch. Fortunately, within the last few years, a classmate has developed a closed Facebook page for our class. We are now able to be in touch with some long lost classmates. And yes, we do definitely have more people in attendance at our reunions. Now, why would I be giving advice when I am here to present a scholarship in memory of my son, Ian Skippy McCluskey? Ian graduated on this stage with the class of 2000. He chose not to go to his fifth year reunion. Ian was killed the night of graduation, 2007. He was the passenger in a DUI accident. He was 24 years old. He did not get to choose if he would go to his 10-year reunion. When it was time for the 10-year reunion, a couple of his classmates brought me a beautiful red rose as a remembrance. His picture was posted in the uptown window, which was decorated by his class. You do not want to be that classmate. This is why we ask you all to make good choices and to be safe. Accidents do happen, and when they do, many lives are changed forever. Or, in Ian's case, his life ended. Yes, he did get the choice when it was his five-year reunion to go or not to go. By the time it was his 10-year reunion, he was gone. This accident was the result of many bad decisions by more than just one person. You do not want to be one of those classmates either. Each year, we ask the applicants to write a brief essay based on <clears throat> what has come to be known as the Skippy message. Here is how the message reads. Be safe. Don't put you or any of your friends in any kind of situation that could cost a life. Be in touch with family and friends, and most importantly, your parents. They love you and they worry about you. Be patient, work hard, and the rewards will come. Be yourself and be the best you that you can be. This is the 12th year we have presented the scholarship. Does it get any easier? No, not really. Does it allow us to meet great kids? It does. Most importantly, we hope the scholarship helps the recipients with the cost of education. Once again, the committee could not decide on just one winner. So we are awarding three scholarships. The first two will receive $500. They are Yancey Howe and Crystalline Rhodes. Good luck, thank you. Here, go ahead. Good luck. <laughs> the third recipient will receive $1,000 and it is going to Alex Roselli. Good luck. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Heather Lister and I'm here tonight to present scholarships on behalf of the American Legion Post 574 in Mount Jewett. 
We have put together this scholarship program because of our mission statement, which states, the American Legion was chartered and incorporated by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization devoted to mutual helpfulness. It is the nation's largest wartime veterans service organization committed to mentoring youth and sponsorship of wholesome programs in our communities, advocating patriotism and honor, promoting strong national security, and continued devotion to our fellow service members and veterans. The Legion stands behind the issues most important to the nation's veterans community, backed by resolutions passed by volunteer leadership. These scholarships are to help a student from this community to further their education by attending a college, university, or tech school, and to help them financially stay committed to their goals. As part of the scholarship committee, I'm here tonight to present three scholarships, one for $1,000 and two for $500. Tonight, I'd like to present the $1,000 scholarship to Aiden Hewlings. The next two for 500 for Rachel Keller and Heli Sass. Good evening. I am retired Staff Sergeant Walter Schauer. I'm here on the behalf of the VFW Post 6347 uh, Mount Jewett Veterans Memorial. We have three scholarships to award tonight. Two of them are for 500 and one is for 1,000. The first $500 recipient is Mara Nicholas. The second $500 recipient is Rasa Wright. And the $1,000 recipient is Chrysalyn Rhodes. Hi, good evening. My name is Amy Gulliver, and I'm here to present the Shelley and Jeff Johnson Memorial Scholarship. As I was sitting thinking about tonight, I realized that this is our 19th year giving out this scholarship, which is incredible. I didn't have kids, and tonight, my son graduating, I thought I knew what the world was about, as I'm sure most of you do. You know what you want to do, you know where you want to go, and you have big plans. Follow those plans. Follow them through the whole way. They're important to not only you, but your families too. The Jeff and Shelley Johnson Memorial Scholarship is not an academic scholarship. It's based on overcoming adversities. And not everyday adversities that we all face, but adversities that are above and beyond the students write a essay that is read by a committee and then chosen. This year I'm proud to announce our scholarship to Skylar Nicholas.
Uh, my name is Frank Siriani. I'm here representing the Cane Lions Club. Across the globe, the lions are rolling up their sleeves and taking action with over 1.4 million members. We are the largest service organization in the world, and we, as dedicated, we are dedicated to help those in need today as we are over 100 years ago. We're giving out uh, two scholarships tonight. The first one is to Alex Roselli. The second is uh, Crystal and Rose. Again, my name is Frank Siriani. I'm a Master Sergeant, retired, United States Air Force. Uh, I'm here to, and am proud to be the chairman of the Staff Sergeant Kenneth R. Van Giesen Patriot Award. Uh, I'm here also with Sergeant Van Giesen's father, Thomas Van Giesen, First Sergeant, Pennsylvania National Guard, retired, and Amy Gulliver, uh, Staff Sergeant Van Giesen's sister. As I call your name, please fall out here to the left and stay in place until you're released. Hayden Barr. Hayden is going in the United States Air Force. Nicole Brown is going to the Army Reserve. <laughs> Dominic Cartwright, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Aiden Eulings, Air Force Reserve. <laughs> and Mitchell Ostrander, United States Marine Corps. You have been awarded the Staff Sergeant Kenneth R. Van Giesen Patriot Award in the amount of $500. I take great pride in presenting you this award on behalf of the Kane Lions Club, who has assumed proud stewardship of this award, the Kane VFW, a major contributor, Kane Eagles Club, your community, and other community organizations. Without their support, this award could not continue. This award was created in May of 2011 by the Kane Lions Club, supported by the Kane VFW as the Patriot Award. On July 18, 2011, Kane lost one of its own, Staff Sergeant Kenneth Van Giesen, who was killed in action supporting Operation Enduring Freedom Afghanistan. And shortly thereafter, the award was renamed in his honor and tra transitioned into a school district community award. About 1% of our population of 300 million commit to serve and protect us, and we are honored to recognize you for this. Please accept your community's thank you for your upcoming sacrifice and service to our great country. With this group, we have awarded 60 awards since 2011. 60 awards of $30,000 that we have received in donations from you, the community, and our major service organizations here in Kane. 
We do thank you. Good evening. I'm Mike Bish. I'm a retired senior chief hospital corpsman. Uh, that means I was in the Navy. I'm Fleet Marine Force qualified, so out of 25 years that I spent in, I did nine years and 10 months with the Marines. Uh, as the good veterinarian uh, said earlier, uh, you never know where you're going to end up. Uh, one thing that I did find out is as a corpsman, not only do you take care of wounded Marines, but you also have to take care of wounded working dogs. And uh, I took, actually took an Army course in veterinary science to do that. So uh, for the uh, people here that are about to go into the military, uh, don't expect that you'll just be doing whatever your NEC MOS uh, is. Uh, I belong to the Ludlow uh, American Legion. It's a James Uber post. Uh, nobody's probably ever told you about the post, but uh, next year will be our 100th anniversary. Uh, the post is one of the smallest in Pennsylvania. Uh, just by where we're at, uh, we're the first non-smoking uh, post uh, the, in all of probably the United States. And in northwestern Pennsylvania, we were the first. Smithport was the second, and that was just within the last two years for them, but we've been uh, doing it for a while. Uh, James Zuber, who the post is named after, uh, died uh, in World War I, unfortunately. Uh, he was from the Ludlow area. Uh, in October of eight, 1918, right before the war was over, uh, he was killed uh, after p participating in the uh, Battle of the Moose Argonne. Uh, he's buried there still to this day in the uh, largest American cemetery and memorial in France. Uh, that has 14,000 other Americans from World War I that, that died there. Uh, we've uh, been going ever since, uh, and we honored uh, our legion with his namesake uh, back 99 years ago. The, pr the awards that we have to give out from the American Legion aren't so large as some of the other ones. We're giving each of the uh, people here that are going to go into the armed services, $100. A hundred dollars can go a long way if you know how to stretch it. But also, we're going to give them a two-year membership for free in the American Legion. Now, uh, there are some caveats to that, uh, and there's a letter in each envelope that explains what they have to do, and they'll be going into military and they'll have to follow instructions, so uh, later tonight they'll go through it and they'll understand. But Getting that Legion card uh, is kind of useful. I know, at least for the Marines here, some of them will probably end up in Okinawa, and they'll probably end up at Camp Foster. And outside of Camp Foster, there is an American Legion, and it has the cheapest steak dinner in Okinawa, Japan, but it's also the best steak dinner. Uh, the card can be used at any club to get into any Legion club once you're a Legionnaire. And the other thing is there's 250 clubs worldwide. So just about every country that you can imagine you go to, you can go in and get a meal and be around uh, people that are American and eat American food. The other thing that we're giving away is should, uh, or when they get out or whenever they would like, we're giving them a block, a brick, at our memorial at the back of Wildcat Park. So that will have their names, their ranks, uh, and then when they were in. Currently, uh, anybody that's active duty in the armed services of the United States is eligible uh, to be in the American Legion. And so uh, they will all be, upon graduating boot camp, eligible. Now, I'm awfully proud of uh, a lot of these young men and women here, some of them I know from scouting and some other things, uh, and being friends of my son, and I, I must say they are uh, taking quite a step. You never know what you're going to run into in the military. Uh, you'll go to many continents. You can, you're the 911 of the United States and the world. Uh, what you need to know, and this is kind of important, so you need to listen up. 
Okay, the first thing you need to know is that you're working on a team wherever you go. And you need to know the job of the person below you and the job of the person above you. Also, you need to know that this isn't the old days when people get drafted. We're long into a volunteer force, many dec or a decade and a half or more into it now. And what that means is education is a must. You must study, uh, you must do well in all your schools, and that's one of the elements of getting promoted. The other thing you need to know is don't do anything stupid and don't do anything stupid on alcohol. Uh, that can cost you uh, your career and it'll definitely cost you probably pay restriction and some other things. So uh, it's always good to mind your P's and Q's as we say in the Navy. And lastly, what the, what the recruiter didn't tell you, okay? Now, some of you will start out and you may stay in one tour. Some of you may end up like me and stay in and become a retiree. And one thing that the press usually gets wrong is they assume that anybody that's been in the military and has gotten out is retired. You're retired when you hit 20 years and step over the 20 year boundary. Then you're considered a retiree when you get out. But you're not a retiree. Everybody calls it that. But officially, by federal law, once you go over 20 years and you accept your retirement pay, you're not getting retirement pay, you're getting retainer pay. From your, if you get out in 20 years until you're there 30 years, you are in the reserves. You're not active, but the Department of Defense and the Secretary of Defense can call you to active duty. Then the next gate is 30 years. 30 years you're pretty much retired, but you can be called back into active duty by the President of the United States. So once you retire, you're really not retired. The other thing is uh, you can also be charged under the Uniform Code of Justice, which is the military's uh, legal system. So uh, you can't get double jeopardy but you can be charged by both. So uh, if you decide to go the whole way, remember you're in it for life once you uh, decide to be retired. I wish you all the best, and if you could come up when I call your name, I'll give you your packet. Nicole Brown. <laughs> Hayden Barr. Okay, now for the Marines, Mitchell Ostrander. <laughs> Dominic Cartwright. The dad was Marine, right? And finally, gentleman who seems to have been winning a lot today, uh, Aiden Hewlings. It's a privilege to be here today to honor these students, Mitchell, Aiden, Nicole, Dominic, and Hayden. Hello, my name is Skyla Govier, and I am the president of the Blue Star Mothers of Kinzu. Blue Star Mothers are mothers of active duty and veteran children. While I am the mother of four, I have two children actively serving in the United States Air Force. My son is currently deployed to the Middle East, and my daughter is training to be a United States Air Force firefighter. The Blue Star Moms have many programs that we are involved in. We have a VA program, a PTSD, Blue to Gold Star, and a nursing home program. I am here on behalf of our graduation program. These students standing here before you have made a choice. I'm sure it came easy to some and not so easy for others, but they made the choice that only 1% of the population make, and that is to serve our great nation. While choosing to fight for our continued freedom, they in turn 
give up a lot of their own freedoms, but still they have chosen to serve. On behalf of the Blue Star Mothers of Kenzu, I say thank you. Thank you for your willingness, commitment, and dedication to serve. Thank you for stepping up to your nation's call. And thank you from a very proud American mom. You may fall out, and may God bless America. Good evening, and congratulations to the class of 2019. We are here tonight to present the John, Don, John and Donna Yolings Memorial Scholarship. Our grandfather had originally created the scholarship to honor the memory of our grandmother. Since his passing, our family has included his name, included his name and added a second scholarship. Through their 54 years of marriage and them raising 12 children, they realized the importance of education. It was their goal to have all 12 of their children receive their high school diploma. It was in this auditorium that they were able to watch all 12 of their children and countless grandchildren walk across this very stage. When setting up the scholarship, we requested that the names of the applicants remain anonymous. The winners are chosen by who we feel best answered a short essay question. After choosing the winning essays, we then find out who the applicants are. We are pleased to award the 2019 John and Donna Hewlings Memorial Scholarships to Miss Alicia Beal and Hallie Sapp. Congratulations to all of you. My name is Mitz Lindquist. It is an honor to present the following two memorial scholarships. I'm going to do Carrie's first. The annual Carrie Snyder Sowers Memorial Scholarship is given to a senior who is pursuing a post-secondary education degree in nursing. Carrie was a member of the National Honor Society while in school and graduated from Kane High in 1987. Carrie and my daughter Lisa were best friends growing up. Her parents, Carol and Ted, live in Florida. Carrie began a nursing career as a candy striper and an EMT. Then she went on to nursing school, which led her to a 27-year career in nursing, much of it serving hospice patients. Carrie loved education and nursing. And for that reason, her parents, Ted and Carol, established this scholarship in her memory. This year's recipient is Ella Marconi. Carol and Ted also established a scholarship for their only grandchild, Tristan who would have graduated from Kane High School with the class of 2015. Trist, excuse me, Tristan, or Big T, as his friends called him, enjoyed many hobbies, including hunting, fishing, four-wheeling, and welding. Carrie, his mom, called him her gentle giant. He was also a member of the Ludlow Volunteer Fire Department. The annual Tristan Sowers Memorial Scholarship is given to a senior who is pursuing a post-secondary education degree from a trade or a vocational school. 
This year's recipient is Dessa Gentile. Good evening, graduates, faculty, family, and friends. The Elizabeth Ann Regal Memorial Art Scholarship is in memory of my sister Beth, who was tragically killed in 1993, the day of my senior prom, at the age of 15 by a drunk driver when she was coming home from the drive-in. This $1,000 scholarship is for a graduating senior who has a passion for the arts. The recipient is chosen from an anonymous essay written about how the field of the arts has impacted their life. My family and I have been doing this scholarship for 20 plus years, and this year I watched my parents tear up and say this essay, sorry, could have been written by your sister. My sister was creative and loved to draw and craft. She had a zeal for life and a gentle spirit, always joyful and smiling and looking for the best in others. Looking upon the class of 2019, my family and I hope that you know each of you have a unique talent and gift that will have a great impact on this world. Believe in yourselves and you will do great things. Use your gift to create your own masterpiece and your future. We wish you the best of luck. This year's recipient of the Elizabeth Ann Regal Memorial Art Scholarship is Kristen Zolkowski. Hi, my name is Ange Costanzo. This is my wife, Michelle. We'll be presenting the Jarrett Costanzo Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is being presented to a student athlete that excels in the classroom and has the admiration of their teachers and coaches. This is always an emotional process for us, and we would like to thank all those that applied. We'd also like to thank this community for your continued generosity and support. And last but not least, we'd like to thank our fundraising and scholarship committees for your love and support. This year we're awarding two $1,000 scholarships. The first, Ella Marconi. <laughs> and Aiden Hewlings. Good evening and congratulations to all graduates and their families. My sister Barb, our brother John, and myself, my name is Becky Jensen, are very happy to provide a scholarship to honor our late parents, Claude and Eleanor Olson. They were graduates of the Kane High School and were enthusiastic supporters of the school district for many years. They enjoyed cheering on their children, grandchildren, and all young people from the sidelines of many sporting, academic, and musical activities over the years. To honor their memory and legacy of service to Kane High, we provide this scholarship to a graduating senior who plans to pursue a career in various fields that are important to our family. Those include biology, wildlife management, counseling, education, healthcare, music, and the oil and gas industry. In, particularly, in particular, we look for someone who has demonstrated the traits of honesty, kindness, perseverance, determination, and resourcefulness. We had the pleasure of learning that many of the students on this stage 
uh, all are great examples of all of these important life characteristics. We are very pleased to award our scholarship for 2019 to Theodore Curcio. Good evening. My name is Corporal Ted Race. I'm the patrol supervisor at the State Police in Ridgeway. I've been honored by the German family again this year to uh, give these scholarships out. They're two de very deserving people. The first one's Hallie Saff, who's going to attain, uh, go to Duquesne University. And the second one is also uh, Ella Marconi. She's also going to attend Duquesne University. Frida Calkins Rolf Memorial Scholarship was established three years ago by my late uncle in memory of his parents, my grandparents, who were big advocates of supporting the local community, either through service or financially. Earlier tonight, we awarded the same, the same scholarship to, to a Johnsonburg area high school graduate, which is where my grandparents are from. My uncle, Scotty Calkins, who lived in Mount Jewett, established the same scholarship here in Kane. This year's winner of a $4,000 scholarship is Miss Raisa Wright. Congratulations, Raisa. Good evening. My name is Amanda Mix, and this scholarship honors my husband, Michael. Who you are is what makes you special. Do not change for anyone. What lies ahead will always be a mystery. Do not be afraid to explore. When life pushes you over, you push back harder. Where there are choices to make, make the one you won't regret. While things happen, will remain, <clears throat> will never be certain. Take it in stride and always move forward. Congratulations, class of 2019, and congratulations, parents, friends, everyone who helped them get here. Mike was a 1990 graduate of this school, and he was a huge supporter of our football. He lettered all four years of high school and played in the Big 30 Classic. Mike was killed in a car accident. Um, he was hit head on on his way home from work, on his way to the first opening football game of the season in 2015. I am honored as Mike's wife to present this year's Mike Mix Memorial Scholarship to Miss Raisa Wright. Congratulations to the class of 2019. I'm Francine Caruso Imbrogno, here to present the Richard and Margaret Caruso Scholarship, which was created by my brother in memory of our dad and to honor our mother who is here with me. And I'd like to add that she is a 1939 graduate of Kane High School. The scholarship is given to a Kane student who will be attending Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and the candidate is selected by a committee at IUP. I am happy to announce that Paige Nicholas is this year's recipient.
Good evening. I'm Lisa Keck, and I'm the director for the Kane Community Hospital Foundation. Congratulations, graduates. Agents for Change often ask the question, do we settle for the world as it is, or do we work for the world as it should be? Raisa, in pursuing a career in nursing and serving vulnerable populations, you have chosen to work for the world as it should be. Decades ago, Sybil K. Kane shared your vision and established a trust to honor her father, as well as financially assisting Kane Area High School graduates pursuing a career in nursing. On behalf of the Kane Community Hospital Foundation Board, I am proud to award the 2019 Dr. Thomas L. Kane Scholarship for Nursing to Raisa Lynn Wright. Congratulations and best wishes in your endeavors as you work for the world as it should be. Good evening. Let me start by saying congratulations to the class of 2019, your families, and your teachers. You did it. The future is now wide open. Ben Franklin once said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. For more than 40 years, the Kane Day School has been laying the foundation for lifelong learning with its three and four-year-old preschool classes. We enjoy reconnecting with former students who entrust us with their children and welcoming new families to create memories, make friends, and have fun while learning. A few years ago, the Kane Day School Board of Directors and teachers Linda Hurst and Anastasia Watts decided that we wanted to establish a scholarship for graduating seniors that are also graduates of our program. This scholarship is a tribute to lifelong learning and the role that early education plays in laying this foundation. We're thrilled to announce the partnership between the McKean County Community Foundation and the Kane Day School Alumni Scholarship Fund and recognize our inaugural scholarship award for $500. The selection committee was impressed with all of your activities, community involvement, essays, and grades for those students who applied. Congratulations to the alumni of the Kane Day School, as you are certainly a well-rounded group of individuals and you make all of us proud. It is our privilege to recognize Adam Sicker as the 2019 Kane Day School Alumni Scholarship recipient. Congratulations. On behalf of the Ludlow Volunteer Fire Department, I'm Jonathan Byers, currently serving as Chief of the Department. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the Ludlow Royston area. I very fondly remember Reverend Miller's tenure as the superintendent at Olmsted Manor. In a few months, one of my classmates and friends, Jody Larson, will be retiring from that position. Forty-five years ago, I was sitting on this stage with the class of 74. Well, at least most of us were sitting. As you guys did, we all marched out to pomp and circumstance, and at the appropriate signal, we all sat down. That is, with the exception of Phil Bowerly. He's in the front row. He goes to sit in the chair behind him. There's somebody already sitting there. He moves to his right. There's somebody already sitting there. So there's poor Phil in the middle of the stage standing. I am here to present the fire department's Tristan Sowers scholarship. Uh, you've already heard some about Tristan and his mother, Carrie. I knew both of them, very fine people. The Tristan Scholarship from the Fire Department has two aspects. Tristan was a volunteer fireman with the Ludlow Company, a young guy 
learning. And at this point, I should like to make a pitch that not only the graduates, but some of you in the audience consider joining your local fire department. We don't have enough people. Yes, it's difficult, it's dangerous, it's demanding, but the reward is that when your friends, your community is in peril, you're the one that comes to the rescue. And that's always appreciated. So it, that is part of it, that we wish to remember Tristan's service in the fire department. The second aspect has to do with what I consider to be the most powerful words in the English language, designed and built. If we do not have someone to figure out what to build, how to build it, and the craft people with the skills to build it, we have nothing. Those who dream of a world without fossil fuels, a run on renewable energy, it's going to take a lot of sophisticated engineering and a lot of very skilled builders to make that dream come true, to make renewable energy and other things efficient and economical that we can use them as a foundation of our society. Tristan was very interested in welding and he was going to pursue that career. Uh, his life, unfortunately, was cut short in an automobile accident. So I'm going to again, like others have done, admonish the, the graduates in the words that my late mother often used. Be careful. The recipient of this award tonight is already serving in one of the local fire companies and he is going on to a trade school for welding. I'd like to present the, this award to Ellen Ettinger. Good evening. First off, I'd like to congratulate all the parents. You guys did it. And when you guys get home, give them a big hug. They, they worked really hard to get you to where you're at, whether it's your parents, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, thank them. I'm here tonight to present the Don Magnuson Memorial Scholarship Award. Probably, or probably most everyone here knew Matt Don Magnuson in some way. He was a manager and assistant vice president at the Hamlin Bank and Trust Company for 40 years. He gave loans to people that he believed in, not based on their credit score. He gave many people a chance that, that they needed to start their lives and businesses. Don was a treasurer of the Kane Area School Board for 42 years. He was a member of the Rotary Club for 39 and served on the Borough Council, excuse me, Council for 26. Don was also an active member in every club and every event held in Kane. What many people might not know is that Don Magnuson started the first basketball program for youth 66 years ago. On Saturday mornings at the original Kane High School, he mentored many young people. He continued, he continued this at the now middle school until his oldest son, gra grandson, finished the program. Don also anonymously donated dress clothes and basketball sneakers to kids who could not afford them so that they would have them for their practices and games. The shoes and clothes would magically appear for those players that were in need. Don loved the game of basketball. He was a basketball official for many years, whether it was basketball for young kids, high school kids, or even NBA games coached by his best friend, Chuck Daly. He didn't miss any games. Don went on tour with Chuck Daly during the Detroit Pistons championship run. He loved all sports, but the love of, basket, but the, love of the game of basketball was all enthralling to him. When Don, a father, husband, brother, grandfather, uncle, and friend to so many of us passed in November of 2016, the Don Magnuson Memorial Basketball Scholarship was started in his honor. This is the third year presenting in his memory. 
from an essay of How Basketball Changed Your Life to Be Successful and Responsible. The recipient of this scholarship is Ella Marconi, who will receive a $1,000 scholarship. She is the daughter of Mike and Sherry Marconi. Hello, class of, of 2019. Congratulations on all your successes so far, and the best of luck in all your future plans. Good evening. We are here on the behalf of the Cinderella's Closet and Kane. I am Jackie Cicchetti, the president, and this is Cheryl Bradybaugh, vice president. I am here to present the first Cinder Cinderella's Closet of Kane Memorial Award. This cash award is made possible, possible by the organization's committee, the generous donations, and our fundraising events. It is given in memory of our committee member who has passed away. In 2017, our committee lost one of our founding members, Dana Burton. Dana was a Kane High graduate in the class of 1994. She helped develop this organization and was the vice president for four years. She loved this program and helping the girls select their gowns, feel beautiful, all the while making sure they were having fun. Dana was a sequins and glitter kind of girl. She always said, the more bling, the more sparkle, the more she loved that gown. With this award, every year we get a chance to speak of our friend, our committee member, our fairy godmother, who we all miss very much. A couple of the criteria for winning this award are the recipient must be a Kane High School graduating senior who has previously used Cinderella's Closet of Kane Services to attain at least one dress or gown package for a high school homecoming snowball or prom during her four years of high school and submitting a personal essay on what does community volunteering and giving back mean to you. After much consideration, our committee members have selected our first winner of this award and it goes to Raisa Wright. Congratulations and best of luck. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mrs. Uh, Lori Lewis. I'm the high school teacher up here, and I'm also the senior class advisor. And I just want to thank all of you parents and family for supporting your, your students. We've had a very good year, and I've had a really, um, really good time with all, all of these students this year. Uh, but for now, I'm going to give out a couple um, certificate or awards. Statewide Tax Recovery Scholarship is being awarded to a student who is continuing their education in the field of business. And this year's recipient is Keith Myers. Okay. Um, next up, I have some scholarships from the school store a store that we uh, that the student have have created several years ago and um, the money earned goes into scholarships for students that work at the store and they are Jared Hadsel <laughs> Michaela Fritz <laughs> Alex Roselli and Zach Zolkowski And then I have one more um, presentation from the Jamestown Business College. And they award a 
Um, I'm pleased to announce, oh, I'm sorry. I'm awarding two business students uh, a full two-year tuition to the Jamestown Business College, and they are Keith Myers and Michaela Fritz. The Di Di Diana J. Hewlings Memorial Scholarship is awarded in memory of Diana Hewlings, who worked at the Kane Community Hospital for 22 years as a nursing assistant. This scholarship was established to honor Diana's love of nursing and children. This year's scholarship is awarded to Ella Marconi. The Gentleman Family Scholarship is awarded to a senior who is pursuing a career in physical therapy, physical education, health, medicine, or a closely related field. The Gentleman Family has requested this year's $1,000 scholarship be given in memory of cousin John, a.k.a. G. Gentleman, class of 1969, who passed away on May 7, 2017, after a courageous battle with cancer. This brings the total gifts from this scholarship to 23000 Best wishes and congratulations to Ella Marconi. The Sashi and Gladys Kane Memorial Scholarship Fund provides two scholarships to Kane Area High School seniors who are pursuing a bachelor's degree, have a 3.5 GPA, and play an active role in their school and community. This year's recipients are Alicia Beal and Alex Roselli. Kane Lutheran Home Nurses Scholarships are awarded to students who have shown a willingness to learn and desire to enter into the healthcare profession. This year's recipients are Raisa Wright and Ella Marconi. The Emil Zuzik Vocational Agricultural Scholarship is given to an outstanding vocational student. This year's award winner is Clayton Dietrich. The Kane Area Citizenship Award is presented to a student who contributes greatly to the overall atmosphere of the school through a positive attitude, humor, and concern for their peers. This year's award goes to Robert Racy. The Bernie and Toby Cohn Memorial Award recognizes a student who has overcome great challenges in order to achieve success in school and contribute to the community. This year's award winner is Skylar Nicholas. The Dutter Scholarships are provided through a trust fund established by the late Dr. and Mrs. Dutter. The Dutters were longtime residents of Kane, where Dr. Dutter practiced family medicine and at one time served as school physician. The Dutters had no children of their own, but always had a genuine interest in the youth of the community. Please hold your applause until all recipients have been called. The 2019 recipients are Alicia Beal, Ella Marconi, Chrislyn Rhodes, Zach Zolkowski, Alex Roselli, Kristen Zolkowski, Aiden Hewlings, Yancey Howe, 
Valerie Rotroff, and Macy Miller. The Howard, Daisy, and Gail Cleveland Scholarships were established in memory of the family to honor those students that have academically achieved a superior level and are deserving of financial assistance. Please hold your applause until all recipients have been called. This year there is one one-year scholarship and two four-year scholarships. The one-year scholarship goes to Hallie Saff. The four-year scholarships are awarded to Alicia Beal and Ella Marconi. We will now move to recognize our Scholastic Honors students. There are five students in the class of 2019 who have obtained a perfect 4.0 or above grade point average for their high school career. These five students, known as the Ranking Five, have also attained the highest grade point average in the honors course of study. As I read their names, I ask that the parents of these students to please stand as well as the students. Students and parents, please remain standing until all students' names have been read. I also ask that the audience please hold your applause until all students' names are read. Alicia Nicole Bill, daughter of Thomas and Shalise Bill. Alicia will be attending Pennsylvania State University and major in veterinarian biomedical science. Ella K. Marconi daughter of Michael and Sherry Marconi. Ella will be attending Duquesne University and major in nursing. Isaiah Ethan Henry Holt, son of Jason and Marcy Holt. Isaiah will be attending the University of Pittsburgh as an engineering major. Hallie Elaine Saff, daughter of John and Elaine Saff. Holly will be attending Duquesne University and major in Forensic Science and Law. Chrysalyn Elizabeth Rhodes, daughter of Brian and Laura Rhodes. Chrysalyn will be attending Juniata College and major in Biochemistry. Along with these five students, we also recognize those students who have attained the highest grade point average in the academic course of study as well as the vocational course of study. These students are known as the Honor Seven. As I read their names, I ask that the parents of these students to please stand as well as those students. Nicole Lynn Brown, daughter of Eugene Brown and Shannon Rainey. Nicole will enroll in the Army Reserves and attend the University of Hawaii. The student achieving the highest grade point average in the vocational course of study Clayton John Dietrich, son of Jack and Kimberly Dietrich. Clayton will be attending Clarion University and he will major in computer science. Congratulations to you students. We will also recognize our National Honor Society members and one National Technical Honor Society member. As I call your name, students please stand and remain standing. Audience again, I ask that you hold your applause until I read all the names. Alicia Nicole Beal, Hannah 
Nicole Buell, Isaiah Ethan Henry Holt, Aiden Matthew Eulings, Ella K. Marconi, Alex John Roselli, Chrysalyn Elizabeth Rhodes, Hallie Elaine Saff, Adam Rich Sicker, Kristen no Noel Zolkowski, Zachary Robert Zolkowski, and Neo Spear Smith National Technical Honor Society. By virtue of the authority vested in me as high school principal, I declare all of you to be permanent members of the National Honor Society. Congratulations. Now we will move to the certification of our graduates. The graduation class of 2019. The class of 2019, as a group and as individuals, you have developed a distinctive character that I will remember for many years to come. During your four years at the Kane Area High School, you have achieved academically and athletically and have been involved in many worthwhile activities in school and outside of school. It is my hope that you take the lessons you have learned these past four years and apply them to your future endeavors. Your potential for success and greatness is unlimited. I wish you the best of luck in the pursuit of your dreams, and I look forward to seeing you and where your life takes you in the years to come. Thank you. We will now begin the presentation of diplomas. I ask that everyone please hold your applause until all diplomas have been presented. Please refrain from calling out or cheering for individual students. I request your cooperation in giving this ceremony, and more importantly, our seniors, the respect they deserve, and providing an opportunity for all of our graduates to be appropriately recognized. Thank you for your cooperation. At this time, I'd like to call Mrs. Claire Ann Buckley, President of the Kane Area School Board, to the stage for the presentation of diplomas. I would also like to call to the stage Mr. Jeffrey Kepler, Superintendent of the Kane Area School District, and Mr. Jay Israel, Assistant High School Principal. Mrs. President, having met all the requirements established by the State of Pennsylvania and the Kane Area Board of Education, it is with my pride and pleasure that I present to you for the reception of their diplomas, the class of 2019. Alicia Nicole Beal. Ella K. Marconi. Isaiah Ethan Henry Holt. Hal Lee Elaine Saff. Chrysalyn Elizabeth Rhodes. Nicole Lynn Brown. Clayton John Dietrich. Aiden Matthew Eulings. Savannah Irene Applenap. Hayden Scott Barr.
Haley Lynn Bergeson. Emily Elizabeth Bernhard. Madison Lee Bizak. Noah Christian Blankenship. Bailey Paul Blint. Devin Patrick Bright. Honey J. Brown. Hannah Nicole Buell. Andrew John Carlson. Dominic Robert Cartwright. Richard Edward Klimenhaga III. Devin Angeles Cook. Theodore Evan Yaples Curcio. Patrick Michael Deitch. Zachary Thomas Duck Straniva. Alan Paul Edinger. Alec Patrick English. Michael Eugene Ford. Dessa Rose Gentile. Michaela Nicole Fritz. Sorry. Sorry, Michaela. Dessa Rose Gentile. <laughs> Jacob Andrew Goldsmith. John David Grimm, Jr. Isaac Joseph Roland Gullifer. Jared Michael Hadsel. Karna Lynn Hemdel. Delson Scott Hillard. Thomas Reed Holt. Yancey James Howe. Alexander Savage Israel. Belise Rosemary Johnson. Elizabeth Page Johnson. Austin Marlin Jordan. Rachel Jane Keller.
Damien Allen Kohut. Kayla Marlene Loophole. Layla Marie Mahalik. Macy Finneyfrock Miller. Joshua Allen Morse. Keith Richard Myers. Mara Jo Nicholas. Skylar Ann Nicholas. Paige Luis Nicholas. Haley K. Okanevsky. Mitchell Jin Ostrander. Nathaniel John Peterson. Austin Lewis Pearson. Sierra Nicole Pontius. Robert Richard Racy. Brandon Michael Reese. Ronald William Reynolds. Alex John Roselli. Valerie Christina Rotroff. Brennan Andrew Schultz. Ashley Lynn Shea. Adam Rich Sicker. Jacob Raymond Silvis. Neo Spear Smith. Ty David Stolly. Lincoln Jack Swanson. Shane Wesley Swanson. Dakota Michael Victory. Cameron Jacob Villazon. Sage Michael Vito. Alexis Nicole Woods. Rasa Lynn Wright. Devin William Young. Caitlin Sue Zampona. Kristen Noel Zolkowski. And Zachary Robert Zilkowski.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the Kane Area High School Class of 2019 graduates. You may now turn your tassels from right to left. At this time, please join us in the singing of the alma mater. Students, please remove your hats. Gentlemen, you may put your hats back on.